Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello everybody, I hope that you're doing well. Today we're going to work on Surah Al-Tariq, which is Surah 86 of the Quran Al-Kareem. Surah Al-Tariq means the nocturnal star or the night visitor. It is made of 17 ayah or 17 verses. It is part of the 30th juz, which is the last juz or the last chapter of the Quran al Karim. Surah al Tariq takes its name from the word al Tariq quoted in its first ayah, first verse. Surah al Tariq was revealed during the Meccan period at a time when the disbelievers did everything in their power to prevent the spread of the divine message transmitted by the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi more precisely when the disbelievers of Mecca used all kinds of means and schemes to prevent and defeat the divine message attributed to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Surat al-Tariq addresses two fundamental themes. Initially, the idea that mankind will have to appear after their death in front of their creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second point is that the Quran al-Kareem is a truthful, decisive word. It is the indisputable word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That no plan or means or plot employed by the disbeliever can divert or disrupt. Surat al-Tariq is powerful because it guides us through the wonders of this world's creation and invite us to reflect on the divine message. Indeed, certain ayat of Surat al-Tariq contain severe warnings and at the same time, Surat al-Tariq encourages men to think, to consider, and to meditate on the origin of his own being, of his own creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created men from gushing fluid, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quite capable of bringing him back to life after death. From the moment we were created by the divine force of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so this same entity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability to create the day of resurrection. So the main argument of Surat al-Tariq consists of saying that the reality of the resurrection is proved by the reality of the creation and the wonders of creation. Surat al-Tariq begins with an oath that demonstrates the immensity of Allah's power that every soul is accompanied by a guardian to protect it, and Surat al-Tariq tends to convince men of the resurrection existence, to prove that each existing or living element on earth is protected by a guardian who watches over its well-being, its security, and, and its continuity. Surat al-Tariq calls upon the stars of the heavens. Then, in Surat al-Tariq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a second oath to confirm that the Qur'an al-Kareem is a sacred text. It is a decisive and undeniable word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the disbelievers have been relentlessly denying it, opposing it, and fighting it, and cuning it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala foiled their plots by divine ability. And Surat al-Tariq ends by a request to grant time to the disbelievers because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa not to rush for revenge, but rather to give them time because he will see what will become of them and their plots. Now, I'm going to translate Surat al-Tariq, ayah by ayah. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the specially merciful. Wasama'i wa tariq by the sky and the night comer or the night visitor. Wa ma adrakam tariq and what is it that makes you know what tariq is? An najmu taqib. It is a star that pierces the darkness with its brightness. From Ayah 1 to Ayah 3, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
start Surah At-Tariq with an oath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the sky or the heaven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by everything above us and by the night visitor. The word Tariq refers to all that who travels by night, who will tell you what is the nocturnal visitor. It is the star of penetrating brilliance, a star whose light penetrates or cuts through the darkness. The stars of the heavens are proofs that there is nothing in the universe that can continue to exist and survive without its creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, watching over it. Inna kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafid. There is not a soul, but over it is a watcher, a keeper. فَلْيَنْدُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّا خُلِقْ So let the man look at from what he is created. خُلِقَ مِنْ مَا إِنْدَافِقْ He is created from a strongly ejected fluid. يَخْرُجُ مِنْ بَيْنِ الصُّلْبِ وَالثَّرَائِبْ Derived between the backbone and the ribs. From Ayah 4 to Ayah 7, each soul is watched over by a guardian. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watches over everything from the stars of the galaxy to human beings. In Islam, it is rather an angel who ensures that a person's actions and deeds are recorded in writing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then asks man to consider how he was created. He was created from a single drop of semen, which evolves into a living human being. All life begins from a fluid ejected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks man to meditate on the miracle of his own existence. An ejaculated fluid released from between the backbone and the ribs then evolves into a fully formed being. So let us look at the miracle of the universe, then look closer within ourselves and contemplate the wonders of of the creation of a human being. إِنَّهُ عَلَى رَجْعِهِ لَقَادِرُ Most surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to return him back to life. يَوْمَ تُبْلَى sarair The day when hidden things shall be made manifest. فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ وَلَا نَاصِرُ Then he will have no power or strength and there is no helper either. From Ayah 8 to Ayah 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is certainly able to resurrect human beings after they die on the final day of judgment. On that day, all secrets will be unveiled. What was created once can certainly be created again. On that day, men will have neither the power, nor the strength, nor the support. And then, when all the secrets are revealed people will not be able to escape from the consequences of their deeds and their actions by their own means or with the help of others. By the heaven that is the owner of return. And by the earth that has cracks. Surely that is the word that separates the truth from the falsehood. وَمَا هُوَ بِهَزْلِ And it is not an ordinary word. From Ayah 11 to Ayah 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a second oath. He swears by the sky, which sent down the rain, and by the earth bulging with new growth of the seeds, according to a well-known cycle. The rain falls down again, then the earth splits again, allowing plants to emerge like the rain Al-Quran Al-Kareem was sent down to human beings. The truth it contains should not be taken lightly. إِنَّهُمْ يَكِيدُونَ كَيْدًا Surely they are plotting with deceit. وَأَكِيدُ كَيْدًا And I too plot with deceit. فَمَهِّلِ الْكَافِرِينَ أَمْهِلْهُمْ رُوَيْدًا so give the disbeliever a respite, reprieve them for a while. From Ayah 15 to Ayah 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the disbelievers. 
the disbelievers are wrong to think that their plan and plots against Sidna Muhammad وسلم, can work. They wish to defeat the call of Al Quran Al Karim and to prevent the spread of Allah's message. They are misguided. They try to create doubts in the minds of people and circulate false information about the Prophet Sidna Muhammad. وسلم. But they do not know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is planning that none of their plans will succeed. They will be utterly defeated. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy all their efforts and their planning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can undo all their malice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa not to be hasty in revenge. He tells the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to leave them alone for a while because he will see what becomes of them and their schemes. They will realize themselves if they are able to defeat the Qur'an al-Kareem by their plots or if the Qur'an al-Kareem will dominate them on the same ground. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of the situation. He alone has the power from the beginning to the end. In conclusion, Surah Al-Tariq talks about the creative nature of man. He was created from a single drop of semen and formed into a living human being. Surah Al-Tariq recalls that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave life to human beings certainly has the power to create him back a second time. His resurrection will have as its only goal to reveal all the secrets of man which have remained hidden in the world. On that day, no one will be able to flee the consequences of their deeds and their actions, nor count on the help of others. This world is a divine creation and the work of prosperity. And the truth revealed in Al-Quran Al-Kareem are not a joke, but a firm and a decisive, immutable, absolute reality, a word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu a'lam, I hope that this small translation and explanation of Surat Al-Tariq was helpful. I wish you the best. Take care of yourself. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye-bye.